Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the delightful Kalman operetta, Gypsy Princess, starring Gordon McRae. And his guest, the Metropolitan Soprano, Yarmila Novotna. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroad. The same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now here is our star, Gordon McRae. <laughs> Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we're bringing you a musical fantasy. In it, I'm a prince named Ronald. Yarmina Novotna is silver, a beautiful star of the operetta stage and glittering society cafes, known throughout the mythical countries where our fairy tale takes place as the Gypsy Princess. Magnificent. You know, Prince Ronald, you remind me of your father. What? Why, I'm young, Lord Boniface. I love life and gaiety. My father's a hard, cold man. In fact, he's insisting now that I return to my own country. Yes, rather. But when your father was young... Oh, Ronald, uh, Lord Boniface, how delightful. Silver, how beautifully you sang. You're even lovelier than I remembered you. <laughs> Could such a change take place in one fall a day? Uh, if you two would excuse me, I... Oh, Lord Boniface, don't run away. No, no, don't be in a hurry. But I can see from the light in you two young people's eyes that I'll be much more welcome somewhere else. Well... Uh, besides, the ladies of the chorus have finished, and there's one of them that I'm anxious to have a little uh, chat oh, with. Oh, huh. we <laughs> understand, Bonnie. <laughs> Good luck, Boniface. Oh, thank you. A man my age needs it. I'm afraid Lord Boniface is in for some competition tonight. 
Why, all of the men here are eager to win the favor of the ladies at the corner. And how well about you, Prince Arnold? Oh, that's something that every man goes through at one time or another. But that's all behind me. My eyes and my heart are fastened on a star. We're glad to come from college. We've read the book of knowledge. Except perhaps its most absorbing page. It's most absorbing page. Romantic education begins with gravitation towards the lovely sirens of the, the lovely sirens of the day. In years of indiscretion, we had the same obsession. And frequently we get the crazy news. Get the crazy news. The crazy news. We have a glamour that transcends the charm of other lady friends. First of all, this limelight lends enchantment to the view. But when we see them closer and hear them murmur, oh, sir, you're very kind and I don't mind, provided I can bring a pal or two. We succumb to the craze for the nimble caught a face our elders and betters had before us. Meet them, we treat them, we take them out to dine. We pet them, we let them monopolize us. Before very long, we are going rather strong, believing they honestly adore us. A sympathetic, strenuous, excitable, ingenuous, engaging little ladies of the chorus. With a smart pair of holes and a nice about his nose And eyes that provoke and then implore us They fool us, they rule us, we never stand a chance They coax us, they coax us, but there God bless all their dear little hearts If they don't aspire to part, their faces and figures simply floor us Their witcheries continuous, the slender, shapely, sinuous Enticing little ladies of the chorus. The danger of the horrible people are in the chorus. Enticing little darlings of the chorus. There are some very charming girls in our chorus, Ronald. Silver, I'm in love with only you. I want you to marry me. Oh, Ronald. In your country, princes don't marry to speak. The singers, you can't defy your father. But I know what we can do. In this country, a marriage performed by a notary is binding, provided it is followed by a church ceremony within three months. Read this, my princess. I, Ronald, the Prince of Cotonac, do hereby most solemnly declare that I say Silva Barescu to be my lawful wedded wife. And that within three months I will confirm this contract before God and the world. Oh, Ronald. In the three months this gives us, I know I can work things out with my father. Say you will, Silva. Oh, Ronald. How can I say no when my heart is crying yes? Silva, tis you I love. Tis you I love and you. Passion is a restless river, love a common boundless sea. Love is an unsparing giver, generous and brave and free. Passion is a pleasing, fond emotion, volatile as morning dew. Love is an eternal deep devotion. Such a love is mine, sweet for you. Look all the world before you, dear. Why have you chosen me? Ah, Silva, you are all my world, beloved, and must ever be. Selfless sacrifice to find at last where. 
I shall return to my own country and I will send for you in a very short time, my darling. I will never permit the heir to my throne to marry a stage performer. Do you hear me? Never. I shall announce your engagement to the Countess Stasi at once. Won't do any good, Father. I have hoped for your blessings before Sylvan and I have our religious ceremony. But if you will not grant them, I'll marry her without them. Don't forget, we have already had our civil ceremony. In this country, only a religious ceremony is valid. That you will never have. I shall announce your engagement. I'll never marry the Countess Stasi's father. I'll never marry anyone but my gypsy princess. You mustn't leave, Silva. Ronald will send for you. You have his word for it. Ronald's word means very little. He left me to return to his own country and to talk to his father. Everyone knows the result of that conversation. Ronald's engagement to the Countess Stasi has been announced. It's all over for Ronald and me. It's all over. <laughs> I must forget him. I shall never return to this country or to him. There must be a way. In our hearts, Sylvan and I are married. There can never be another. Oh, love is love that pays. the second act of The Gypsy Princess, starring Gordon McRae and his guest star, Yarmila Novotna. Only if he allows you to complete your marriage contract with Silva. It's no use now, Mother. I was unable to find Silva. She left me only this note. My dear Ronald, it was a gay and lovely interlude. But I'm sure you didn't take our civil ceremony any more seriously than I did. And to me, it was an amusing way to say goodbye. I wish you and your bride to be every happiness. Oh, my poor Ronald. 
There are only a few days of our three months left, Mother. When they are passed, I shall marry the Countess Stanton. You shouldn't. No, you shouldn't have run away from Robin and left him only that note, Sylvia. Oh, Bonnie, I know it now. I must see him again. And in another day, it will be too late. Take me to the court of Ronald's father, Bonnie. And introduce me as your wife. Ah, tomorrow is the day, my son. The three months will be up. Your silly marriage contract with that gypsy singer can be forgotten. Ronald, you're not listening to your father. No, no, Mother. I was watching Lord Boniface's wife. She just walked into the garden alone. <laughs> now, now, your promise to another. Although I must say I don't blame any man for watching the Lady Boniface. She's lovely. She's one of the most charming guests we've ever had at the palace. Now, if you had gone through a civil ceremony with someone like that... Excuse me, Mother. Father, I must speak to her while she's alone. I must talk to you. I, I was just going in, Ronald. I came out here looking for my husband. Why did you marry Lord Bonner? Oh, what's the good of talking about it? I'm married. You are about to be married. There's nothing more to be said. Then the promises we made, the life that we planned to share means nothing to you. Oh, it's a lovely dream, Ronald. And a lovely memory. Merry dance and gleaming tresses, flashing glance and soft caresses, all the rapture love can know. his wife? I can't think of her as his wife, Father. Come, children. No one else has seen you. Let's return to the ball and forget this. What's going on out here? Oh, Lord Boniface, I apologize for my son's conduct. He was kissing your wife. Edwin. Bonnie, will you please take me home? No, I... I don't think I will. King Edwin, this lady is not my wife. Bonnie. She isn't your wife. What do you mean? Silva wanted to see you just once more, Ronald, before you married the Countess. So she asked me if I would present her as my wife. And King Edwin, the lady has every right to kiss your son. She's his wife. If they have a religious ceremony before midnight. And we're going to have it. This is the girl who I, I forbid it. No son of mine shall marry a cabaret singer. Sire, if you will forgive me... I think you're in no position to make such a statement. Boniface, I shall have you beheaded for such impertinence. Nonsense, Edwin. Lord Boniface has a perfect right to say what he did. Go on, Boniface. 
kill all of them. Hey, Ronald, do you remember I once told you that you were a great deer like your father? Well, your mother was a singer, a great star, before your father married. Your mother was the widow of a count. Hmm. Before I married the count, I was a cabaret singer, and you know it. And if my son's happiness is at stake, it's time the rest of the world knew. If you refuse to give your blessings to this marriage, I shall tell the entire kingdom who I am. Oh, bravo, your highness. Mother, you're wonderful. And now, Edwin, I think you'd better go in and explain to the Count of Staffy. I... I... No, let Ronald do it. <laughs> no, Father, I haven't time. Sylph and I are going to make arrangements for our religious ceremony. Right now. Oh, darling, do you really think it's wise? Why? I think it's wise, wonderful, the greatest thing that ever happened. And then, don't you? They live happily ever after. Carmen and Novartner will be back in just a moment. Our thanks to the other members of our cast, Norma Varden, Howard McNair, Marvin Miller, and to our entire company. Gypsy Princess, with music by Emmerich Kalman, book by Arthur Miller, and lyrics by Arthur Stanley, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Gene Holloway. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroad. To help meet the nation's demand for graduate nurses, including the growing requirements of the armed forces, at least 50,000 young women are needed as student nurses this year. If you're a high school graduate or college student, and if you're interested in a career of great prestige, opportunity, and service to humanity, visit your nearest hospital, school of nursing, or school advisor, and find out about the many attractive opportunities for a career and for self-development which nursing offers young women. Now here again is Miss Novotna. Carmilla, you are a wonderful and exciting gypsy princess. <laughs> Thank you, Gordon. You, Father, was certainly a problem tonight. I never thought I'd get you. Well, times have changed. Nowadays, any young man's father would be glad to have his son marry a singer like you. <laughs> That's 
what my father-in-law always said. <laughs> what girl are you after next week, Gordon? Devlin Kate, I think. She's uh, definitely going to be our guest star. But in the show, the boys from Syracuse, I, I, I sort of get so confused that I'm not even sure who I am. Oh, I'll bet you find out in time for a happy ending. <laughs> I certainly be listening to you and Miss Kate and all of that wonderful music. Well, thank you and good night, Yarmina. And thanks again for being with us. All aboard! Well, folks, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so until next week, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. Princess was presented by arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae appeared through the courtesy of Warner Brothers. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. Now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Oh!